think I chose well because I can tell you I feel that I'm, you know, not working every day. I'm just, I'm just having fun. This is a really fun career, and you know that because I can see you the passion that you put into your videos. You're not working. You're you're just having fun, <laughs> and you know it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Rhinoplasty Podcast with me, Dr. Cameron McIntosh. Season three, live face-to-face -face interviews. And it can only be live because I've got a guy who's all the way from the Dominican Republic with me today, Fernandez Goico. Welcome, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And it's such a huge honor to be you know, in your podcast, which I, I was already a fan and I ran into you here. It has been such a lovely coincidence to have that. No, it's so cool, man. I mean, we're in Istanbul. We both came to visit Tio and yeah. be on his course. And here we get to meet guys from around the world. I mean, it's amazing. Dude, you got to tell the listeners, where is the Dominican Republic? Well, Dominican Republic, it's a beautiful island between Cuba and Puerto Rico. Yeah. In the Caribbean. And we're actually uh, pretty big when it comes to, it's the biggest economy right now, the whole Caribbean. And it's a fast-growing economic economy. Uh, in economy in, uh, in, the, in the Latin America. So that's amazing. right now it's, yeah, it's, it's hitting hard. So that's good. Dude, I have Especially to, after a pandemic, right? You I have say. to tell you one of the funniest stories that ever happened in my life. What? So you got to dial back way to the start of my Olympic canoeing career. And I was training with an Austrian Olympic team and they said they're going to go and train in Costa Rica. So, I mean, I'm 20 years old. What do I know? I go to the travel agent. They say their flight is only to Puerto Rica. And I'm figuring, Oh, all those little countries in South America, I'll get on a bus. It's no problem. So I book the ticket. I land. It's January. I've never heard Spanish in my life. It's an island. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's an island. I nearly yeah. broke into tears. I was missing my mother. Eventually, oh my I got there. Oh it's, a, it's a funny story. What, what just stood out for me is the Latin American people are so friendly. They are really friendly. And if you go to the Dominican Republic, you'll see that they're very. it's a very good hosting uh, country. Yeah, because uh, Dominicans are just well, tourism is actually the base of our economics. Yeah. So, you know, we're 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 really friendly, receiving people. Yeah. You know? So listen, we've got a lot of things in common: young family, yeah. practice, etc. Tell the listeners, like, where did this whole thing start for you? Well, um, I did my uh, uh, specialty in Brazil with Dr. Pitangi, so yeah. I did uh, plastic surgery there, and then you know just. I always knew I wanted to go back to to Dominican Republic, but plastic surgery was has always been a, a, a passion in my life. It's I'm a, I play drums, so I like music, I like art. So at the end, uh, in medicine, I sort of saw, saw that as the specialty that would most characterize my way of being and thing that I would enjoy doing. And I think I chose well because I can tell you I feel that I'm, you know, not working every day. I've achieved. I'm just having fun. This is a really fun career. And you know that because I can see you, the passion that you put into your videos, you're not working. You're, you're just having fun <laughs> and you know it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Obviously, yeah. It, you yeah. know, we have our days. But anyways, I think, it, you know, you can have the best job in the world and you'll have your days. But at the end, most of it, it's fun, which is great. So now tell me, where do you get your American like, Miami accent? <laughs> American Miami accent. Um, actually, I, I grew up going to summer camps a lot. I used to go to yeah. Maine every summer for a while. It's a Winona camp. And it's just, I think it has to do a lot with the um, interest that you put in the, in the language that you learn. It happened a lot when I went to Brazil. A lot of Brazilian friends would say, you know, your accent in Portuguese is really good. And I think it has to do with like, it's, it's sort of a sign of respect to the language that you're learning. So you yeah. want to learn, in a, learn it as best as possible. And you, you're sort of like respecting that language and that culture in that yeah, way. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's a it's a nice gesture that if you're oh, going to learn cool. something, go all the way. Yeah. Same happens with uh, let's go change to rhinoplasty. If you're going to learn rhinoplasty, you know, uh, try to get yourself deep in with all the techniques, Absolutely. so you really know uh, what you have a toolkit that you can just pop out any tool whenever you need it yeah. in different scenarios. You know. Yeah. And that's one of the things that uh, brought me here to Istanbul. Uh, obviously, besides being the, uh, the, the capital, the, the, the world-renowned country for Turkey for, for um, rhinoplasty, but also the fact that um, after the pandemic, uh, I used to do a lot of 
Um, before the pandemic, I used to do a lot of uh, structural rhinoplasty. Yes. And when the pandemic hit, I was like, what am I going to do all this month? So I started reading Tio's book, which came out July 2020. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. that was like an enlightening moment in my life. Yes. So it's interesting because I devoured that book and I started doing um, his technique, Tio rhinoplasty. And it's really interesting that this was the first time that I saw, uh, along with social media, someone that would not reserve anything under their, their uh, how do you say that? Like uh, under their, they would not reserve any secrets. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, and any ace under the sleeve, that's what I wanted to okay, say. Okay. So at the end, um, you see uh, this guy pouring every information with videos. So I, this is the first time I fully understood what a push down was. Yes. Like I, I always heard about push down and I would yeah, look yeah, yeah. look it up in videos and YouTube. Or you can never find something so detailed like his vi his images and his um, yeah, yeah, yeah. animations that you go like, this is how the push down is done. Yeah, yeah. This is the suture that I make. This is how I enter. This is how I go out. Yeah. You know, this is the strip that I make. So at the end, it worked. Obviously, uh, when you go uh, to my country where you have a lot of ethnic rhinoplasties, there's a limitation yes, when it comes sure. to, to, his yeah. to his technique. So I think the good thing, going back to having all the tools you need, so you will get some patient that that will be a perfect technique. Others, you'll get some of that and maybe mix it with something else. You yeah, know? yeah. So it's, it's just interesting to have this specter of you know this range of yeah, and imagine colors COVID, COVID uh, hadn't happened you might still be doing structural rhinoplasty obviously and oh. if you go to most Latin American surgeons you'll see the most of them do structural rhinoplasty yeah and um, that's that's where you know there's it's you're sort of uh, talking about G Jedi and and the dark forest so yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a very different I almost see it as two different surgeries so when you end up mixing both you're sort of, that's what I want to do. Like I want to sort of get the best out of this and best out of this and just try to see how that can enhance the way I, you know, uh, operate on my patients. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's a, it's a challenging, it's a very challenging um, uh, situation because you end up uh, with very different uh, uh, physical structures. Um, when it comes, for example, the cartilages and I think rhinoplasty, you know it very well. They're very thin compared Absolutely. to what you see. Yeah, yeah. This marvelous golden cartilages that we see here in yeah. Turkey, you know. So um, it's it's just um, getting a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and trying to use your expertise and your experience to mix them all together. Yeah. So, so let's move a little bit away from some of the clinical stuff. I want, I'm very interested to chat about social media because social media is massive in like Latin America. It is. So how do you keep that fine line between like self-promotion and and information because like i always remember rod Rorick saying to me hey cameron everyone's world famous on their own website yeah exactly you know what would your advice be to the guys who out there on a, from a professional side of things more than advice i mean i don't know if you know if uh if i'm uh an expert to talk about advice i can tell you my experience yes, so yes. i can tell you that the way i did it you go to my my uh instagram for example I used a lot of humor and I use the humor to capture the patient and then inform the patient. Yeah, yeah. So I, you'll see that a lot of the times and humor, I mean, not never in the sense of making fun of, yes. but mostly in uh, trying to inform people, but you know, humor just captures your attention first and you go like, oh my God, that's funny, but look at the message behind the humor. Yes, yes, yes. So I think that's, that has been the, let's say the recipe to maybe uh, getting a lot of uh, people to to maybe follow us. Not a lot because, I mean, you, you talk to other Latin American uh, surgeons and they have 10 times what the followers that I have. But at the end, I think the engagement that you get from that is really interesting. So I would tell the, 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 the surgeons, uh, focus a lot on information for the patients. Yeah. There's a lot of um, misinformation. There's a lot of lack of information. So when you have this, um, you know, uh, platform, use it in a way that you can actually enlighten or, or give, uh, uh, you know, just uh, give light to yeah. the population out there and tell them this is the right way to go. Yeah. And I think 
when people see that, they, they start trusting you, they refer you, obviously results are important. Um, but other than results, they want to see the person you are. Yeah. They get to learn that, you know, you're, a, you're, you're not only a doctor that's going to tell them what they need to do. You want to listen to them. You yeah. want to, uh, you want to, you're human. You have your, your family as well. Yeah. Um, I've seen in your podcast talking about uh, situations, uh, how to handle with the family and all that. Yeah. You know, you have that. We, we, we as surgeons, you and me and, and the rest, we, we, we have that situation where you have a lot of work and you have a family as well. Yes. So that balance, for example, it's really hard. Plus that at the social networks. Yeah, of course. It's just a lot of work and, and, and everywhere. You know okay, so... I mean, you've got a great family, beautiful wife and kids. Let's Thanks. forget about how to balance that. How to balance yourself because you clearly, you've got to be on top of your game. You're on top of your game. What's your secret to staying where you're at? Not burning out, having enough time to calm, be calm, mentally in the right space, etc. Make things that make you happy. Even if your work makes you happy, make other things apart from your work that make you happy. Hobbies, for example. I play drums. Yeah. Every week, I... I rehearse with my band awesome. and I love that. That's a, an anti-stress uh, moment that I forget about the world. Yeah, yeah. And I just think about that and I think that revives me. And also sports. I love doing sports. Yeah, yeah. You know, having time with my family, obviously. But you need time for yourself. What genre just, do you enjoy the what, most? What? What genre of music? Drums. What is your favorite? Oh, John Ray? Yeah, what like what type of music? Oh, I'm, I'm more of a rock. Uh, okay, kind of, yeah, okay. Progressive rock, mostly. Yeah. And if you ask me, you know, uh, about specific bands, I'll be, you know, as a drummer, I'll go to Led Zeppelin, I'll go to, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, Tool, which is a rock band that I love. It's just, at the end, uh, I look mostly for the drummer kind of, yeah, yeah. the drummer, where the drummer uh, uh, highlights the band. But I love every kind of music. Like, you go to my country, there's a lot of uh, merengue. I love merengue. You know, yeah, a lot yeah. of dance merengue. So it's just, at the end, I love music, art in general, in yeah. that aspect. But you need to do things outside of your job that, you know, just clear your mind. Absolutely. And I, I think that is key to keeping yourself uh, <laughs> alive in this, in this world of plastic surgery, especially facial plastic surgery. You know, mm. the, 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 the psychological part drains you a lot. Absolutely. And, and you need to drain that out. Eventually. Wow. Well, FG, it's so nice chatting to you. I think <laughs> your energy is palpable. I hope for the people listening, guys, that you'll, you, you'll probably, be inspired, man. And you I, go out there and, and enjoy enjoy the privilege of being a plastic surgeon. I love surgeon, this. Man. I love being in your podcast. I, I, you know, I never thought of being in your podcast. You, you have all those huge surgeons here. So no, I'm really. honored to be here. Yeah. And I love the way you conduct all this because we don't talk only about rhinoplasty. Exactly. Plastic surgery. You, know, no, no. you just make this... You, you, you draw around the situation, yeah. which I think it's a beautiful painting at the end. No, cool. All Thanks, right? man. Thank awesome. you for having me. Dude, God My bless and go well, eh? Same here. Guys, make sure you come back again <laughs> next week for another cool episode of the Rhinoplasty Podcast. Awesome.